Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, today, we will be going through the instructions of the Popsicle Stick Gradient Painting program that is now available. Um, in your programming uh, kit, you should have received 11 Popsicle Sticks. They may be wrapped up in like a little bundle, five containers of acrylic paint, a paintbrush, some command strips, and three cardstock templates, uh, four cardstock templates. That's actually a typo. Um, you will need to have the following on hand to complete this program, a container with water, additional painting colors if you want them, and glue. You're definitely going to need the glue. So with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to do is uh, make your canvas. So we're going to go ahead and lay down two of our popsicle sticks like this, and we'll do these here in a second. This is where your glue is going to be coming in handy. And I'm just using some generic Elmer's glue. Oh, I hope I'm using some generic Elmer's glue. It looks like the lid is a little, a little clogged. That's okay though. And what we're gonna do is apply glue to our popsicle stick nice and evenly like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and line up the rest of our popsicle sticks. Now in my instructions, we have written that you wanna go end to end and as close to the tip at the end there as possible. So go ahead and try to do that. Um, you're welcome to get creative if you want. Um, you know, these are just, uh, just kind of how we did the basic instructions. And we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, and then once you've applied your glue, go ahead and let that dry probably about 15 minutes, uh, give or take. It depends on what kind of glue you've used. Um, I'm using regular Elmer's glue, so it's going to take about 15 minutes to dry. And then I'll be back with you. See. You. All right, so before we get on to the next step, uh, I'm going to actually talk about what a gradient is. And I have here our handy little sample uh, here that's also in your instructions. So gradient is the gradual blending of one or more color to another. It's also called a color transition, or if you've seen it in hair, you might have heard of it as an ombre. Um, so basically what you're going to be doing is taking one color and gradually blending it with another color so that they meet kind of in the middle. Um, and you can do this in a lot of different ways. And this one we have blue to pink with the purple in the middle. And this one, what we did was alternating pink and yellow. And so we have this nice orange effect until we have this transition with those spots of yellow in the middle. And then you can also go from dark to light with black on top, white on bottom. It's kind of hard to see the white because this is a white canvas. Um, or you can just kind of play around with it. Or you can go uh, just shades of gray with the white at the bottom, black on the top, or black on the bottom, white on top. There's not really a wrong way to do a uh, gradient um, and you can play around with it if you want to play around with the colors uh, that we have provided which are black white yellow pink and blue you're going to need a piece of paper to do that but otherwise you can just get started on your gradient on your canvas so you want to select the colors that you want to use and i'm going to go ahead and for mine i'm looking at some samples that i'll show in the next step I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, some blue and some pink and a little bit of white. I'm not gonna use all the colors necessarily. So what I wanna do is I wanna start with the white. Let me go ahead and open that up. We'll use a little bit of pink. Oop. And we'll have our blue kind of near the top there. So, we're gonna go ahead and apply our white kind of down here at the bottom, along with our pink sort of right here. And what I'm gonna do is rinse off the, that mix that I just did on my paintbrush. Boop, boop, boop. Noises help. And we're gonna start painting horizontally. So that way the colors get spread evenly across. Uh, and then have the pink start to meet there near the bottom. So you can kind of see what's going on. I'll flip this up here in a second. And so we have 
this very gradual transition from white to a very light pink. Uh, if you want it to be a little darker, you'll add another layer there on, over the top. And you can just bring it down until it meets with that white or whatever color you're using. I'm just gonna be using the colors that I said I was. If you want a solid level of pink, just move that here towards the top. Go ahead and do that. And this is where I want to start introducing my blue. So we're going to go ahead and grab some of that blue and pop it down there. We're going to start blending right here. Here we go. And as you blend, it should start to turn a shade of purple. You may need to repeat the step a few times to get it to the shade that you're wanting, but it will eventually become that nice purpley shade. Here we go. So I'm mixing the pink and the purple and the blue a little bit just to help it along. All right. And the further up we go, the darker we want it to be, possibly. And I'm also gonna kind of bring some of this down a bit just to help bring that transition to its full kind of form. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you my progress. So we have that very light at the top and it's getting darker towards the bottom. I'm actually gonna rinse off my paintbrush again. I'm gonna apply some more blue here at the top. Just try to get it to that shade that we're really wanting. Uh, this acrylic that we bought is a little watery. Um, so you might find that you have to apply this multiple times. So that's just kind of a heads up there. There we go. But it'll still make that beautiful color. And I actually really want to bring my top piece there with the black. So I'm going to go ahead and add that color. I didn't use my yellow at all. I don't plan to use my yellow. Um, so if you're like me and you're just using a couple of colors, uh, you can just set that aside and you have some paint for when you need it. So we got our black up here. I'm going to drag our blue into it to help blend it along. And then as it dries, now is the time to do touch-ups or second coats. So down here, it's a lot drier than up here. So I'm gonna work from the bottom and then work my way up. And then you'll have a beautiful gradient. All right, once yours has finished drying, you should be able to see your beautiful color transition. This is what mine looks like. Um, hopefully yours isn't doing what mine's doing. It's having a weird pop up all of a sudden. I don't know why, I think it's the glue. It might be the, at the wood uh, expanding a little bit because of the liquid from the paint. Uh, if you have binder clips to hold it in place so it can dry a little more solid, go ahead and do that. If not, you know, it's going to be okay. It'll still look good. So the next step we are going to do is our actual silhouette painting. And of course, we have two options. We have freehand. This is our sample with our freehand. And what you'll do is you'll take a color. I chose black in this case. And you'll just kind of draw something that you want on your painting. Um, and one of the tips we talk about is to give it some depth or the illusion of light or shadow. You can use white for that image, that illusion of light, or if you're doing a white silhouette, you can use black for that illusion of shadow. Um, that's one of the tips. There's other things you can do that are kind of fun. Uh, if you wanna do like a starry night scenario, one thing you can do is put a tiny amount of white on the very tip of your paintbrush and just flick it. That is very messy. So if you're doing that, I might recommend going outside if it's nice enough or having a space or an area that you don't mind getting a little painted. Um, you can also Google painting tips or painting ideas and that might help you come up with something cool to make. So that's one option. We also have, uh, of course, included our templates that you can use and the one I'm going to make today is going to be with one of our templates that we've provided. But we also, you can also always cut out your own template um, I did that for the uh, instructions because I didn't have the templates ready yet. So I just made a little heart and it's very easy to do. If you have paper on hand, you can cut out whatever shape or you can do a Google search for uh, whatever object you have in mind and silhouette 
any uh, might help to do black and white silhouette that can often help narrow down uh, for images. Do bear in mind that depending on what you want to do, you may need to cut very carefully. So I would recommend keeping to simple, large shapes. With that in mind, though, let's go ahead and use our more complete and probably most complicated template that we have provided, which is the lotus flower. And so in our instructions, we talk about our two different options of what you can do, where you can either lay this here and paint this the solid color, and then you'll have the gradient around where you haven't painted, or you can take the innards, which you'll have to put together like a puzzle, which I will do momentarily, and then you can paint over those, leaving the gradient um, on the inside. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do the latter. So what I'm going to do to make my job easier is I'm gonna actually lay this here nice and flat. I'm going to start filling in the pieces. And this might be a good point to tape. Uh, oh, am I gonna be able to do that? Oh, I might not be able to. So actually I'm going to just kind of do my best. <laughs> um, Cause that's all you can do. And you might wanna consider taping down your template as you go. Uh, which is something that I will probably be doing here in just a moment. And then I'll show you the painting process. All right, I found some tape and I actually found some bind uh, binder clips for my uh, popsicle stick problem. So now is the time to choose what colors you want to use. And there's a couple of different methods for how you want to coat over your template. Um, so one thing you can do is paint the whole canvas just one solid color that's what we had done with our uh what to look with our sample here where it's just all black with the gradient on the inside um or you can just kind of paint around the outside like make a nice little outline and then just let it dry um you can do more colors if you want to like do maybe a different kind of gradient there's not really a wrong way to do it uh, for simplicity, if you're somebody who just wants to do simplicity, just do a solid color. I'd recommend white or black. Um, with the, mine, I'm actually going to do um, kind of an outline effect where I go around the edges of the template. And I'm going to go around in white and pink just because I had so much of that on my, on my canvas that it looks really pretty. So to do that, go ahead and open my white. Go ahead and open my pink. <clears throat> I'm going to do it with the white first. I'm actually just going to do, 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 do kind of like that. So I'm just going around in that nice outline effect like that. I'm going to do that with white and then I'm going to do that with pink. And all that this involves is pressing down with your paintbrush in a gentle, rapid movement. So it looks almost like a sponge. Like I said, there's no wrong way to do this. Follow your uh, muse, do what's gonna make you the happiest with your painting. All right, and hopefully you were able to find all of your pieces. Um, oh, I'm gonna move that very carefully so I don't totally lift it up. Blue is really causing a problem. Um, I lost one of my pieces in the process, but that's okay. What we'll do is the piece we moved, once this is dry, we'll flip it over and put it where it needs to go, and then we'll finish that side on its own. So that's just kind of a heads up there. It's kind of the nice thing with the templates is, especially these, these like puzzle piece ones, is you still have most of the same pieces. You just gotta flip it over. I suspect one of my cats made off with it. And then if you wanna do like what I had mentioned, where it's like you also have some pink or a different color, I'm gonna just do the same effect. Oops. And I might actually only do this in some of them instead of all of them. So we'll see just to add that little splash of like color in there, you know? And we're just doing that same movement, just the speckling. 
with our brush. If you're doing the uh, the whole color, just a solid color, say invert or uh, um, yeah, it's invert where the gradient is, you will be doing that probably using a lot more tape. Uh, I found that you'll want to have a good amount of tape on your board just so that way you don't get too much color underneath your template. It's not a big deal, but if you're not comfortable with freehanding uh, paint corrections, you might find it a little irritating. So just a heads up on that. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then I'll finish it up. Okay, so we just finished that project and we used those command strips we provided in the kit to hang it on our wall here. We have our other samples hung up as well, just so you can see the variety of ways that you can get creative with this project. There's no wrong way to do the gradient. As you can see, I have this like fun, like almost spacey looking one. I have this nice sunset. And then this was just a collaboration of all those colors. Um, and there's also not really a wrong way to do your silhouettes. There's ways to really like explore your creativity here, but, um, if you want a free hand, this is a good example. This is our DIY template. And this is of course the one of the templates we provided. Go have fun and get creative. Use the skills you learned today to make some new works of art. And of course, always remember to sign your beauty so that way everyone knows that you are the artist. <laughs> um, Thank you again for joining us today. If you liked this program, let us know by liking and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to find out what else we have coming up or what we've done in the past, uh, you can go to ppld.org and under programs, you'll see our calendar of events coming up. A lot of our virtual programs will link back to YouTube where you can see what we have done and videos like this, which are coming out for the month of the program. <laughs> um, Thank you again, and we hope you had fun.